The demon inside Alicia's body, fake Alicia, didn't leave her room, but stood admiring herself in the mirror like a narcissist, surprisingly. When the mother entered the room, the reflection in the mirror returned to its original state. She entered carrying a bag and said to her daughter, Tonight is the second day. You have to continue drinking human blood to sustain your life. So before that, I have to go find someone to catch. Remember, don't leave the house while your parents are still at home. You can only go out when we're in the garden, but you must avoid places with sunlight. These are the instructions the demon gave me. Absolutely do not take off this coat with a hood because sunlight will destroy your demon soul. I know you're not a human, but you're still my daughter. So, only when night falls can you be free to do whatever you want. Now, it's time to go to the strawberry garden. Fake Alicia didn't respond. She just smiled. Then her mother went out to work in the garden as usual. The couple had a strawberry garden on the hill behind the house, but today, the husband was sick so the wife went alone. After her mother left, the demon inside Alicia's body began to control her, taking a sharp knife to cut a line on her finger, then waited for the blood to flow and splashed it onto the mirror. The blood flowed down and suddenly seemed to seep into the mirror and disappear. Finally, there was the laughter of a female demon. Time passed quickly, finally, the sun was about to set over the hills, and the night was descending upon the village. The husband was still deeply asleep from noon until now. After drinking all the medicine his wife had given him, he slept as if he had forgotten everything, sinking into a deep slumber. Meanwhile, fake Alicia, now that the sun was setting and the sunlight had faded, was no longer in her room. At that moment, her mother returned from the garden. She hurried to her husband's room to check on him, seeing him sleeping soundly. She sighed with relief and went to her daughter's room to find Alicia. The mother tiptoed to her daughter's room. At this moment, the sun had truly set and the night was dark. She held a flashlight and asked, why so silent? Is the little one in her room? She pulled the door open slowly. Since the door was made of wood, it made a creaking sound as it opened, sending chills down her spine. She shone the light around, but couldn't see her daughter. She called out, and from behind, Alicia appeared, saying, Where are you going, Mom? I'm going to catch someone. You stay home and look after your father. Mom, don't worry. Since Alicia obeyed, her mother felt truly relieved and continued her dark work. Catching people was much easier for her because of her past crimes, one of which was particularly heinous, killing pregnant women and consuming their fetuses for her s. pals. Although no one knew what she had done, she had moved to another village before marrying her current husband. Love had caused her to pause, but her wicked nature hadn't changed over the decades even though her crimes had reduced. Outside, on the dirt road, the rural village was desolate. Unlike the bustling city, it was eerily silent and dark, especially without the moon that night. The dirt road was pitch black. She sat in the bushes, not daring to swat away the mosquitoes. She knew that at this time, a boy from the neighboring village walked back home because they couldn't afford a bicycle so he had to walk. She had been waiting since seven o'clock, but by almost eight o'clock, there was no sign of the boy. She nodded off several times, but because of her daughter, she tried harder. Although it was quiet here, there were still houses around. A slight noise could alert them and their dogs. She accidentally got bitten by a mosquito and brushed it away. At that moment, she was no different from a thief. She was about to steal the life of an innocent boy. At exactly eight o'clock, the air became even quieter. She dozed off in the bushes, but suddenly heard voices in the distance due to the quiet surroundings. 
The little schoolboy said to his mother, Mom, why did you suddenly decide to ride the bike with me today? Seeing how hard my son studies, I can't bear to see you tired anymore. From now on, we'll borrow Auntie High's bike, and I'll take you to school. It's dangerous to come home at night, my son. Yes, it's been a long time since I've ridden a bike. Come on. Mom, let's go home. I'm starving. Then the mother's flashlight accidentally shone into the bushes, blinding her, however. Neither she nor her son but into the bushes, so they didn't see her. Their bike passed by without noticing her, disappearing into the distance. After the mother and son rode away, she was angry and muttered to herself, awful, I wasted hours waiting, and now it's all ruined. Only that little brat is the easiest target. Who would have thought, with that, she angrily walked away. She had lost her prey. But she consoled herself, knowing there would be other opportunities. Seeing the prey, she tried to pay attention. But around her was still desolate, no one in sight. Only that man kept walking as if he didn't know the Grim Reaper was waiting in front of him. At this moment, the man suddenly fell down while walking, crying. It seemed he was heartbroken or saddened by something to drink. So much that he got drunk like this. She stood from afar, not hearing clearly, but vaguely knowing that he was lamenting his fate. She walked closer, hiding a knife behind her back, calmly moving as if nothing was happening. When she got closer to him, she could see that he was completely intoxicated, his mind as confused as that of a madman. She intruded while he was crying and asked, Who are you? Why are you crying here? His response was cold and angry. What's it to you? Get lost. HMM, such impoliteness, talking to an elder like that. Hearing those words only made him more furious, standing up and shouting, Are you my mother? Get lost. Or okay asterisk asterisk elu. As he spoke, he pulled out a shiny knife. And because there was a house nearby, the light could shine enough to see a sharp iron knife. She wasn't afraid, but she pretended to be scared. Hesitatingly continued to walk away. After walking a distance, he fell flat on the ground, throwing away the knife. He lay there, completely drunk, presenting an opportunity for her. Without hesitation, she trod on his head, causing him pain. But she pressed him down so hard that he couldn't scream, only weakly moan. Too weak for anyone to hear and help. She took his knife and slashed across the back of his neck. He wreathed in agony in a pool of blood. But the pain couldn't be relieved because he couldn't scream. She continued to cut until his head came off and his struggle ceased, thanks to the distant light reflecting back, the prey lost his head. She was delighted, but she couldn't bring the body back to offer to the demon, so, she just took the head with the blood-soaked shirt of his to Alicia first. Meanwhile, fake Alicia, now that the sun was setting and the sunlight had faded, was no longer in her room. At that moment, her mother returned from the garden, she hurried to her husband's room to check on him. Seeing him sleeping soundly, she sighed with relief and went to her daughter's room to find Alicia. She hastily removed his bloody shirt to wrap his head, then chuckled quietly, preparing to return. But ahead, an old man, probably her age, was approaching, causing her to panic, hiding the head behind her back. She was horrified to see the old man holding a flashlight, if he saw a headless body on the ground, it wouldn't be okay. She was startled when she saw him approaching, intending to flee, but tripped and dropped the head, rolling near the nearby river. The old man also arrived, seemingly less drunk than the young man, with a bottle of liquor in his hand. Sighing with relief, because drunk people's eyesight would be worse than normal, especially in the darkness let alone at night, and the flashlight wouldn't illuminate much in such darkness. She waited until he called her, You there, what are you doing here? 
I'm here on business. What's it to you? Why are you holding? Something in your hand, old man. Don't make a fuss. It's my business. Stop. He ran over and grabbed her hand, making her angry. Struggling to break free, then tearing off the ring, causing him to fall over. She picked up the head and the knife and ran home with all her might. Later, he accidentally hit his head on the ground. So he fainted right there with the headless body and a strong smell of blood on the road. The next morning, when the two men went to work, they found the body and the old man. They immediately reported to the police, who quickly arrived at the scene along with a crowd of people, including the old man's son, who angrily ran into the crowd, calling for his father to wake up. At that moment, a young policeman asked, Is that your father? Do you know that a murder happened here? Because the body was covered with a white cloth, before the old man's son arrived, he didn't notice much and didn't know. Hearing that, he was terrified and asked again, Here, officer. Yeah. What's noteworthy here is that your old man collapsed next to that body. So, maybe he knows something about this brutal murderer. The young policeman nodded and turned to wake up the old man. And they asked him. But suddenly, a woman interrupted. It seems he's drunk. How can we trust his statement? The policeman said, It's okay. At least there's some clue. The old man then remembered last night and said, I remember now, last night. I met a suspicious woman. As soon as he finished speaking, the crowd started murmuring, Heavens! The murderer is a woman. Oh my God! Who could be so wicked? Everyone! Calm down and help! The policeman said before they calmed down. Then turning to him, he said, Sir, let me remind you that you held that woman's hand, and then I accidentally broke her ring. It seems like the ring was still in my hand. When I fell to the ground unconscious, that's all I remember, so where's that ring? Hearing that, he looked back and saw that the ring was missing. Even around there, there was no ring, let alone at the crime scene. Then the woman who had interrupted earlier spoke up again. See, clearly, he's hallucinating when he's drunk. Look around, there's no ring anywhere. So the whole neighborhood started discussing, true, there's no ring to be found. The policeman sighed and asked them to calm down, then turned to the two father and son. All right, for now, let's take you both to the station for a more practical interrogation. Okay. Then the police dispersed them to prepare to take the body away, and the case temporarily stopped. When the police car carrying the headless body left the scene, suddenly, a gust of wind blew the white cloth off the body, causing everyone on the car to be horrified. The flesh was all gone, only bones without a skull. That demon had come to enjoy its shares agreed with the mother, without the body. The investigation became completely in the dark, with no identification documents and everything already inside the mother's shirt. Nothing could be verified, and this incident made them worry about the involvement of demons.